Of course, all of you heard that the gifted Irish singer Sinead O'Connor passed away suddenly at a very young age. I think she was 57 or 58. And of course, when you read about Sinead O'Connor, you can't help but have mad respect for her. Because she rebelled against the values of materialism. She rebelled against the objectification of women and sexualization of women. She, in fact, embodied so many Muslim values before she became Muslim. She spoke out about Palestinian rights. She supported just causes before she converted or reverted to Islam in 2018. I was struck, however, subhanAllah, that in the same week that Sinead O'Connor passed away, there was another figure of public note who passed away, the Muslim scholar Shabir Akhtar. Shabir Akhtar died, he was about 63, again suddenly. And for those of you who don't know, Shabir Akhtar wrote a very, early on in his career, he wrote a very important book called A Faith for All Seasons, which is a serious theological engagement with Islam a book that should be read by every Muslim. And then he went on to write extremely powerful and poignant Islamic responses to Christianity. He was a scholar of the Bible as well as a scholar of Islamic theology and the Quran. And he engaged Christian theologians in ways that were rigorous and disciplined and compelling. He wrote a very important book about the philosophy of the Quran. A book that shows how and why the Quran is so critical for this age and is a book that has compelling answers for so many of the problems of humanity in our age. But of course, I couldn't help but take note and compare was a certain level of melancholy between the response to Sinead O'Connor and the response to Shabir Akhtar. And then compare this to the response to the passing away of Ahmed Jalal, the black jazz musician, Muslim musician. Is it because Sinead O'Connor is white? that so many Muslims, more Muslims, responded to Sinead O'Connor than they did to Jalal Ahmed? Of course, I could say it's because she was in pop music as opposed to jazz music. But my moral duty, for moral duty to engage in self-reflection and self-analysis I must critically reflect upon the racial issue before chalking it up to styles of music. There is no cop-out before Allah. The comfortable road is often exactly what leads to the shaitan, not to God. The comfortable road is to find excuses 
for why we responded to Sister Sinead O'Connor far more profoundly than we did to a black Muslim jazz musician. And because I am duty bound to engage in the moral past, in the past of critical self-reflection, I must ask myself the really hard question. Does race play a role in your consciousness? Does race play a role in your being? But even beyond that, you all notice how the disparity and the difference between our response to a gifted, talented sister in music as opposed to a scholar. My problem is not just that most mosques, I am sure most mosques and most imams probably never heard of Shabir Akhtar, never even thought of Shabir Akhtar, leave alone thought of ever inviting Shabir Akhtar to lecture in any of their institutions. And so when he dies, the vast majority of Muslims are silent. Another scholar bit the dust. But what is more tragic for me is I am sure that the percentage of Muslims that read Shabir Akhtar is minuscule. I am sure, I am absolutely sure that for all the pontificating, pompous, arrogant Muslim kids who blabber on on social media endlessly, who complain about crises of faith, who think that they're posing greedy, complex questions, they never bothered to lift a finger and to read someone as analytically rigorous as Shabir Akhtar. No one bothered to read his work on Muslim, early work in Muslim theology, season for all faiths. No one bothered to read his work responding to Christianity. No one bothered to read his work on secularism because he wrote a philosophical Islamic response to secularism. No one bothered to read his work on the philosophy of the Quran. No one bothered. We Muslims love to pretend that we are in a moral crisis, intellectual crisis. I have questions that I can't be answered. Oh my God, I'm having a crisis of faith, help me. But lift the book, read the text, know a scholar, God forbid. This is also part of our current affairs. Allah told us that the ulama are the inheritors. This is a hadith from the Prophet that the ulama are the inheritors of the prophets. And we made ulama mean like those people who are effectively a computer repository of hadith, who can just regurgitate hadith back at you. These are our ulama. But people who think, who analyze, who study current affairs, who are steeped in current affairs, who say important things about current affairs, who actually exercise ishtihad, like Shabir Akhtar. No. We have no particular use for them. And if we're lucky when they die, you'll have a couple of sources that will say something nice about them. And we move on. This is why 
there is the plight of the Muslim Ummah. This is why it would simply be unjust for Allah to help us because we are an unjust people. We are an ignorant people. We are not that thinking Muslim that I referred to at the beginning, the thinking, reflecting Muslims who reads current affairs with a mind towards true ishtihad to respond to the realities of our age in a meaningful and most importantly at all in a moral, moral and virtuous way. Allahumma ghfir lana, Allahumma ghfu anna, anna, Allahumma ahdina li akhraba min hadha rashada. Allah forgive our sins. Allah guide us to be better Muslims, to be true Muslims. Allah, Arab, help us to be thinking Muslims, reflecting Muslims who read our world correctly and who craft a response to the challenges of our world meaningfully, significantly, morally, and beautifully. Ya Allah, Ya Ali, Ya Azim. وصلي وسلم وبارك على محمد وآله وصحبه وأقم الصلاة